and I am the uh, person in charge of this program right now and we are implementing it with uh, CMI, the Indonesian headquarters and also with uh, branches and chapters uh, in the respective area. So I will uh, continue to present in the in this agenda next. Uh, I think Andre, you can do the going to next slide because <coughs> can you try? I will try. Yes, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yes. So this is the outline of uh, today's webinar. Uh, I will talking a bit about the background of the program and we'll continue about why solid waste management is crucial in the urban context, especially with disaster reduction and why the waste management should be tackled by the community. And we will see the link to the community solid waste management and the program at the local government context. And we will gather uh, some lessons learned from our project and I will try to give some recommendations at the end of this presentation, uh, whether or if other CNSs or other organizations in tourists to replicate in their area. And of course, to be open for questions at the end. Uh, so this is the program, uh, the Greater Jakarta Urban Disaster Reduction and Climate Risk Management Project, already implemented since 2012. Uh, since the beginning of the year, this is the second phase of the program. Uh, the goal statement keep remain the same uh, from the beginning to reduce death, injuries, and socioeconomic impact caused by climate change related disaster and environment degradation in greater Jakarta area. So uh, by the end of the last year, we did uh, some changes about the outcomes but still in the same corridor from the previous one. So we have three outcomes. The first one is to improve the PMI capacity in disaster risk reduction and climate risk management. The second one is to establish partnership with government, university, and private sector, and to improve the community capacity toward the impact of climate related disaster. So the climate, so the solid waste management, the community solid waste management will be under the outcome number three within this program. So this is the target area. Uh, if you see the map down there, so it's a West Island, uh, Java Island uh, map. And then you will see the greater Jakarta area will specifically close to Jakarta in the red map, uh, red area over there. And you will see North Jakarta and Bogor district as our target area and you will see the blue polygon there as the Chiliwung watershed. So Chiliwung is a river. Uh, it's, it's basically a river flows from the uphill in Bogor area to North Jakarta at the coastal area. So this is a system of uh, river covered uh, flows through uh, several cities in Jakarta greater area. So we have some communities in North Jakarta and several communities in Bogor district as part of our target area. So uh, the question is why solid waste management important in, 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 in this program? Uh, we get data from the statistic like uh, in the Korean data 2017 and it revealed that 5,500 ton of waste produced every day in Jakarta itself. If you see the Jakarta map in, in the left, and you will see the distribution of waste production in every cities of Jakarta. So uh, this is not including the satellite city of Jakarta. For instance, Bogor, they produce waste uh, 600 ton every day, or in the east, we have Bekasi city, they produce certain amount of uh, waste every day. So this is only from Jakarta, 5,500 ton every day and more than half of the waste are organic waste. Well, actually this is possibly to recycle and to use further for compost and so on. And the remain are uh, non-organic waste such as paper, uh, plastic and others. This is including the residual uh, waste. And surprisingly, 89% of them are sent to the final landfill. This is 
uh, in other cities of Jakarta. So, and we have 11% of the waste is not transported to the uh, final landfill. The question is, where do they go, the 11% of the waste? So this is the, the, the current situation. Probably the 11%, uh, the community just throw it away to the river, to the Chilewung River, to the drainage and many, many open areas. So this is kind of a big issue in, in current situation in Jakarta because uh, last month in February, the government reached 700 ton of waste from the Chilewung River. So this is very current, uh, last month happened. And also uh, between border between Jakarta and Depok. Depok is the cap Depok is the satellite city of Jakarta. The government dredged 60 ton. So this means that uh, garbage flows from 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 other city to Jakarta. This is not only resulted from the Jakarta's waste itself, but also from other cities through the river. So people at the satellite city, they throw their garbage to the river and flows to, to Jakarta area through the river. So this is also a problem in Jakarta. The fact is, it's only Jakarta government only has 213 solid waste facility. Uh, what I mean by the solid waste facility here, the temporary dump site that budgeted through the government funding. And also they have 500 garbage banks only. Uh, the garbage bank, I literally translated into Indonesian uh, term. Basically, it is a community waste collection center where there is a community uh, where, where the collection center receives garbage from the community household. I will deeply explain about this further. And if you see uh, the next slide, you will, uh, I want to ask you to focusing on the picture first. So between greater Jakarta area, it is actually a uphill and low stream uh, landscape. So Bogor would be in the uphill area and Jakarta would be in the lower uh, stream area where 40 per, more than 40% of Jakarta is under sea level. And then uh, if we looking at the Chiliwung, so it flows from Bogor, Depok and Jakarta through the up and low uh, stream landscape and the question is why Jakarta flooded so there is no single answer why Jakarta flooded currently because during like 100 years ago Jakarta already flooded up to now so there will be a lot of answers regarding the flood in Jakarta for instance even though Jakarta is not raining but when Bogor area is raining it could be very possible that Jakarta will flood because of the uh, water flows through the river from Bogor also from Depok, the middle city. It could be also from the high tide issues because 40% of the area is below the uh, sea level. And also as the impact of the climate change probably will raise the sea level. And a lot of land subsidence, especially in the north of Jakarta where industrial residents, they use uh, underwater uh, pumping. They use dig well to, to have a clean water. So when they exploit that, that every day so land subsidence will be an issue if you see in the picture you we, we have problem that up three to ten centimeter per year prior to underground uh, water exploitation and then the lack of water or storage reservoir in the uphill in bogor and depok is also an issue because uh, water just directly uh, flows to the river nothing absorbed through the uh, man-made lake or storage reservoir for instance and the hot topic is waste. It's because of waste. Uh, from the example, the 60 ton was dredged from the river. So people throw their garbage to the river. Uh, and then uh, maybe they're not throwing their garbage to the river, but they throwing their garbage just in the street. The thing is the drainage system will be carrying out the, the, the garbage to the, to, the, to the main river. So wherever you throw your garbage it will end up in the in the in the river so that's why 700 tons of waste dredged last month during the flood and also we have many experience like the government dredge uh, take over the garbage from the river many many tons so this is the rational 
why we are doing solid waste management linking with the disaster risk reduction so because this is the landscape uh, setting so once we intervene in bogor or depok it will contribute something to jakarta area for instance if we do water uh, reservoir uh, intervention then it will influence jakarta area because the storage reservoir will uh, absorb water for future uh, use uh, and if we don't throw garbage to the river in Abhare, uh, in Bogor, for instance, then it, we will, the Jakarta area will not receive uh, uh, waste in, in their rivers. So this is quite an uh, interesting landscape perspective. And I put here some pictures. So basically the government in Jakarta doing a lot of uh, efforts to reduce the waste in, in in the river so mostly they do the physical intervention to reduce waste in the river as you see now the the, the river basically is clean compared to 2014 because of uh, the latest governor they do they did a lot of uh, physical intervention they did the retaining wall they cleaning the river they have normalization they uh, clean the river very quite often through the local government budget but now in last month, you see the picture in the write down. So flood in Chiliwung River. So still flood happened. The clean, uh, even, even the water, the, the river now is clean. Uh, Chiliwung River still flooded. It, uh, when last month flooded in Jakarta, it affected also our communities. So how, how, how we do the community solid waste management related to the disaster reduction at the urban context? So basically, this is all the the priority from the community, and then they were doing the what so called the vulnerability capacity assessment. I think this is a standard approach. If we are doing the community disaster reduction, they will do assessment in vulnerability and also their capacity regarding many things, including uh, what is the source or the uh, problem when disaster happen, and then they identify in most communities garbage or waste is the main problem of many uh, risks, uh, including flood risk and also environmental health. Especially in Bogor area, because of garbage, uh, there were a special case of dengue uh, happened in 2015, becoming that uh, hot issue in Indonesia at that moment. So uh, waste particularly affected the community through environmental degradation and flood risk. And then after we after the community identified the problem and then they and then we asked them to identify their own solution and then they will prioritize the activities regarding the solid waste management. And here are the basic or the foundation of uh, solid waste community intervention that we have up to now. We have at least five interventions. First, we established CIBAT. CIBAT is the community disaster preparedness team. This is at the village level, and then we train community uh, in some uh, development area, and then we establish uh, the community three R center. Uh, this is like a, uh, at the at the bigger level, and we establish the community garbage bank. Garbage bank at the community level, it will supply garbage to the three R center here, uh, while the garbage bank will serve household level and the 3R center will serve the garbage bank. And then we engage with the local government and partnership with private sector and other association or organization that concerns to uh, solid waste. So uh, firstly, we, we, train C we establish CBAT, the community-based action team, uh, to do many things. And we train them in DRR, we train them in the uh, climate risk management, we train them in solid waste management and we train them in facilitation why it is important to train them in facilitation so it because they will do the community campaign so they need to able to speak in front of the community as the public speaker for instance and the solid waste management training we invited expert from organization we invite expert from the local government to train them on how uh, the foundation of waste separation at also level on non-organic and organic level uh, waste and and, and 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 so on and also the rr training like doing the first aid and and many things related to disaster reduction so once we have the foundation of the 
the the team at the community, the CBAT, and then we expand the 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 intervention to wider communities. And then we we do the clean and green campaign, household to household. Sometimes we gather some households in the in the particular house, like in the picture. The CBAT member educate the community on how to separate waste, organic and non-organic, and we provide them with the bags uh to separate organic and non-organic waste and we also educate them on uh reuse reduce and recycle and how to practice it in 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 the household level and also we do some community work as part of the environmental cleaning like cleaning the drainage uh dredging waste from the drainage and also cleaning the river and so on so this is particularly the foundation of community intervention related to uh, solid waste management. So the core idea of this intervention with the community is raising their awareness and improve their capacity to, to do the recycling, to do the waste separation at household level. And also we established the 3R center, the Reduce, Reuse and Recycle Center. This is, uh, this is like a, a, a middle uh, size of facility that they collect garbage from several garbage banks. So basically, they, we have two types of this uh, center. The first one is dealing with organic uh, waste and then they, recycle, and then they recycle the organic waste into compost. And uh, there are particular activities to seedlings in the community, then the seedlings activity got their compost from this facility. So this is like uh, connection between in each intervention and another one the recycling center uh, they they create handicraft from plastic so if you see in the picture uh, so they create bag from plastic sachet they create a uh, tissue holder they create many things for household uh, uh, things so it will have a economic value after they 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 reshape it into a good uh, marketable uh, items and they also we uh, create like uh, like some 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 creative stuff from from uh, plastic so currently they have a melt plastic melting machine that they melt plastic so the plastic is basically the plastic the bottle plastic uh, and then they melt it and they can create into whatever uh, shape they want uh, to create. For instance, in the picture, I show you this is vase for flower. So this is basically 100% from plastic. And this is not only recycling, they collect it, uh, the waste, they separate based on type of waste, paper to paper, metal to metal, plastic to plastic, and then they will sell it again to third parties. For instance, they will sell it to the factory, so they will sell it to other scavengers and so on with a so uh, this is basically the business uh, is happening in the 3R center in the community so they collecting they selling it and then they create something from the plastic and they selling it while the garbage bank at the community we we are have uh, 17 now in the community so mostly they collect it uh, from the household level so uh, to become the member of garbage bank then you have to separate your garbage at the household level then the 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 garbage bank uh, pickers will pick your non-organic garbage only while the organic waste then they will send the organic waste to the three art center that dealing with the organic waste and then they create compost from that uh, this is at the same time, the garbage banks also create handicraft from, from plastic, from papers and, and many things. For instance, in the up left, you see that uh, some creation from papers. This is actually from newspaper and they make many creation from the newspaper and then it quite uh, have a good price if, if they have this shape. And also from plastic uh, sachet, from plastic, bags they create flowers they create many things and of course by having this business they have income i mean uh, the garbage bank itself they have income 
and the community itself they also generate uh, saving because they bring their garbage to the garbage pay but at the same time it it, it is actually uh, saving money it's like you give your trash and they will get money i will explain you further about this but at the same time there is an interest uh, offer from unilever company i think unilever quite uh, massive in 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 garbage bank in indonesia right now they have thousands of garbage bank they have uh, established all over indonesia uh, they are requesting uh, the garbage bank in north jakarta as part of their uh, network so that they get uh, supply from the garbage bank for their further production for plastic for their product. So up to now, uh, the garbage bank already sent uh, many many kilograms of uh, plastic bottles to Unilever. And this is how the garbage banks uh, work. Uh, if you see in the most right, it is at the household level. So the household will produce waste and then they have to separate the waste into organic and non-organic. And then the CBAT, as the, as the official of the garbage bank, they will pick the waste in frequently, for instance, twice a week or once a week. So this is like a scheduled uh, waste pickup. So for instance, in, in North Jakarta, they do the pickup of the waste like once a week every Saturday. And then the community uh, will just uh, prepare their or non-organic waste in the bag, and then the and then the CBAT will weigh it, how many kilograms that they have. The officers will record it into a book and how many kilograms a family have. And then uh, after collecting all garbage from the household, and uh, and then they will storage the garbage in in the garbage bank storage for further separation. Because sometimes, even the even though they do the separation, sometimes they found uh, organic waste in the non-organic uh, bag. So they need further separation in the in the organic in in the garbage bank storage. And then they will process this uh, this waste into type of business. The first after they have clear separation, and they will uh, separate plastic bottles. They will separate uh, paper, they will separate metals, and they will separate glasses. So they will collect them based on their four categories. And then they will sell these four categories of items into many, many uh, third parties, to factories, to scavengers, to other uh, bigger garbage bank, and so on. And then they also will create handicrafts from the plastic they have, they, they, they have separated during the separation processes. So by having this selling to the third party and by have selling from the handicraft, they will get profit from the selling. And at the same time, it, it, it means that the household level will uh, earn money from, from the selling. So this is like a mutual um, economic activities between the household and the garbage bank and the bigger player of the garbage bank out there so this is how the, they work but in the particular area of the community to to attract more people to attract more households to be member of the garbage bank they cooperate with the community health facility so during the waste uh, collection day for instance at saturday and then the health uh, health personnel from the health facilities will check their blood pressure, for instance, will have a general checkup. Uh, as, as, as it's like a bundling uh, system, system. So they will have interest uh, to invest uh, their time to be part of the garbage bank. I think this is quite effective because uh, currently they, they can get uh, free access, uh, help, help uh, access to by become the member of uh, garbage bank. And also in a particular uh, time, we bundling this, uh, this saving with micro insurance. So we, we attract a micro insurance company uh, to, to, to sell their product to this uh, garbage bank. So basically the community, the member of the garbage bank, they pay the premium of the micro insurance by waste. So they do not need to pay with their own money. 
and then after if they want to claim they can claim with the micro insurance scheme so this is another option that we want to expand further or more uh, household to become the member of uh, Great Beach Bank. I think there will be a lot of options next in the future on how to attract more people to be part of the Great Beach Bank. So this is principally the Great Beach Bank uh, works in the communities and this is uh, applied in many areas of our project intervention. And for sure, we have to engage with local governments. This is uh, undeniable uh, because uh, solid waste management is part of the local government mandate. Uh, they have to tackle in every uh, problem of the waste. Uh, for example, in Bogor, there is a new regulation issued by the local government that uh, if the community member throw their garbage everywhere, and when they, they can get penalty from that action. So this is currently happened uh, last month, the local government just uh, issued this regulation. I put the picture down there. It is in Bogor area. So I think this is a good, you know, uh, it, I think this is a good uh, advocacy and collaboration with the local government on how the local government can enforce the law to, to, make, the, to make better and cleaner environment. In a particular local government in North Jakarta, uh, when the local government want to make maybe meeting, conference, events in the in the government office, and then they will uh, request the handicraft from the community. I think this is also a good collaboration because the garbage bank kind of have a fixed market with the local government because the local government itself request to, to request to the community to provide the handicraft product as part of the local government activities and also we are partnering with a uh, university as you see previously that this is actually a social business uh, especially dealing with the handicraft they create product they selling it and then they they have to be like have a basic knowledge and understanding about this entrepreneurship so we are engaging with the private university who are expert in in social entrepreneurship. So uh, the university will train them in marketing, in product branding, product design, accounting, and these assistants will be like in a regular basis through training, through daily assistance from the university, from the lecturers, from the students. And we are all hoping that uh, the community, the garbage bank can can find the best way to promote or to market their uh, their uh, products. For instance, through online media like Instagram, like Facebook, and so on. So the university will take lead on this process until uh, uh, during this year. And also, as I said before, Unilever, the private company, has partnered with garbage banks in North Jakarta as part of their supplier, and. Also, I want to share that uh, local government in Bogor has formed an association called uh, Garbage Bank Association. So this is owned by the government, where all of our garbage banks now in Bogor already part of the Garbage Bank Association. So this is to ensure the sustainability of the garbage bank after our intervention. So the, the, the thing why we need to do that is because networking the garbage bank need to network with many many net, uh, garbage bank out there because uh, they need to know for instance uh, price uh, the current price of bottles the current price of uh, papers and so on uh, so they can sell the best price uh, to other uh, uh, to other or to third parties regarding the price so networking is also important that's why we connect the garbage bank with the garbage bank association uh, in Bogor uh, area. So uh, through all the solid waste, community solid waste intervention, we got some lesson learned uh, for sure. Uh, so it is now uh, the community like having the sense of ownership. Uh, we are creating sense of ownership by, by having the solid waste management in the communities. Uh, like 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 I want to give an example uh, when I was visiting North Jakarta, 
they said to me that when they see plastic bottles in the street, they kind of uh, fight for each other to pick that bottle of plastic. They know it. Be, they, they do it because they know that bottle of plastic have a price. And then when we observe the environment of the neighborhood, it's it's better now. It's cleaner now. So it means that the community have the sense of ownership of the processes, have the sense of ownership of the system of the garbage bank in the community. At the same time, the government, the local government, is quite interesting to integrate that uh, this movement into their uh, their operation or their bureaucracy. For instance, they they creating the garbage bank association and then they embrace our uh, garbage bank. Uh, organization to be part of the association and so on and also uh, ownership from from other uh, stakeholders for instance from the private sector like unilever so this is like uh, yeah this is a system of ownership that we want to to, to achieve uh, uh, during the intervention because uh, this project will end uh, will end this year so we need to ensure that uh, by establishing ownership the garbage bank will lasting until forever in the community and we have to integrate the solid waste community into urban context uh, like as an example previously that uh, waste is the problem the major problem for uh, urban flood through the river and so on so we have to to think about that waste is not only about cleaning the environment, get money from the business, but we have to connect this with the urban DRR context. And also we have to integrate this into municipal solid waste management system. Uh, it cannot stand alone system within the government system because the government system will be better if uh, the, the community can be the part of uh, the government system on solid waste management. Uh, I want to give an example in North Jakarta. Uh, when they collect waste from the com from the household, and they will separate into plastic, paper, metal, and glass, and they will sell it to third parties. At the same time, they will have residual waste that they, they cannot sell, they cannot uh, recycle. So the question is, where they should throw this garbage? So they send this garbage to the local government because through the environmental agency. So the agency will pick the residual waste and then will transport to the final uh, landfill. So uh, again, we contribute to reduce amount of waste that transported to the final landfill by having this system. So we can imagine if we have more uh, number of garbage bank, then we will contribute to reduce the amount of garbage that sent to the final landfill because the final landfill at the end will have limited capacity to, to dump all the municipal waste. And again, the three R centers, the garbage bank are the innovative and complementary waste management structures in the society, especially in the urban context. Uh, this is not only to contribute to cleaner and safer environmental and also generating income alternative income and also reducing disaster reduction but also this is to contribute for inclusivity for inclusivity for instance in bogor uh, in a particular garbage bank uh, most of the uh, member of the management of the garbage bank are women and also in, in, in North Jakarta. So this is to create inclus inc inclusivity within the society. So in, in mostly in the poor urban area like North Jakarta, where women, they do not have job, they do not have uh, income, but by having this system in, in place that women group now are become empowered by, by, by become the public speaker in the community. They, they, they do speech, they, they keep telling people to separate their garbage to be part of the mem by be part member of the garbage bank and so on. So we empower women in, at, at this system for sure. And what recommendation can be learned for others, especially for other PNSs or other organizations if they want to 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 have such thing like this in, in other places. So firstly uh, we have to work closely with uh, local government and also existing communities. 
uh, we have to identify the system, the local government systems, what uh, law they have, what regulation and operation they have, and then we have to identify the existing communities networks, especially player or actors that are focusing their activities in solid waste management, and also scavengers and how can we deal uh, connect the community with scavengers. Uh, this is important because uh, this is the research mapping that we have to do first. And then uh, we need to have a clear exit uh, strategy. Even we, we do the exit strategy before the end of the project by connecting them, again, networking, by connecting them with the wider societies. For instance, by connecting the garbage banks in Bogor with the garbage bank association, where the association is established by the local government. So by having this, we will have uh, better uh, sustainability in the future. Uh, Invest time in ensuring participation of the community and other stakeholders in the design and implementation phases. So let's put the community uh, themselves as the center of the design and implementation phases. As I explained before, during the PCA processes and the community action plan uh, processes, the community itself as the center of the design. So they, they identify and they find the solution by their own and they implement the, uh, the solid waste management by their own. At some community, we found that they, they themselves, like having that focus to the local government without assistance from PMI, without assistance from, from American Red Cross. So they, they can do it actually, like in North Jakarta. Uh, basically, uh, they, the community, uh, visited the environmental agency to request a truck to pick their residual waste. And then the, because it's part of the local government mandate, then the government pick the residual uh, uh, stress like every week. And again, that's part of the advocacy. They, we have to invest a lot in advocacy, uh, whether the community came by themselves or together with PMI or together with other stakeholders. And also we have to create an entity in, in the community or maybe not creating a new entity, but embedded into the existing entity that uh, the entity will make sure that the process is 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 handled by the the entity that they will do the campaign that they will do the pick up that they will do the selling that they will do the community raising awareness that they will do the the recycling the selling the and many things so we have to ensure that this community is dedicated to do this uh, solid waste management and since we are dealing with product the recycling product, then we have to think about product development, marketing, and networking. Uh, basically, they create like things that they know. They they see something maybe, and then they they, they do it by themselves. It's they have limitation of knowledge, so that's why we have to engage with uh, broader actors. For instance, university that have the product uh, or social entrepreneurship uh, department. So we are doing it now. I mean, uh, we have to invest to think about these uh, uh, items when we are doing the recycling activities in the community. And also for gender equality in all activities, as I said before, inclusivity issue is important here uh, because mostly uh, women cooking in the kitchen, they throw the garbage, they are doing with domestic uh, things in the house and they know many things basically with, with, with waste compared to men uh, group. So that's why we have to answer the gender equality doing this solid waste uh, management. Uh, as a lesson learned, uh, engaging more women group in the, get, in the solid waste community solid waste management will bring more uh, value added in the community. I think that's all from me. Uh, it's better for us to discuss now. You, we are open for questions. Thank you very much. Please uh, unmute yourself if you have questions, or you can also write in the chat box. I believe there is a question already in the chat box. Chat box, maybe you can start with that question, Andre. Can you see the question? Okay, okay. this is from Ian. Hi, Andre. Yeah, I think Thanks. so. Mm -hmm. It's great to see how this program has moved forward and evolved over the last couple of years. How many communicators are now operating in the PMI? And how many? Okay, so 
So how many uh, community garbage bank now are operating under PMI? So up to now under this project, we have uh, 17 uh, garbage bank under this project. And uh, this is spread out in 10 communities. So basically CBAT, the community uh, based preparedness team as the management of the garbage bank. So let's say per village they have uh, 10 to 15 uh, CBAT members. So they are basically who manage the garbage bank at the 10 villages that we have now. And how many community members are involved. So basically, uh, the member or the clients of garbage bank is not uh, uh, many yet. It's almost 500 uh, household now. Well, we believe urban area is a very dense area with thousand and many, many household level. So this number is not enough yet, the 500 uh, clients of uh, garbage bank. That's why we want to try to have more innovative idea and innovation how to attract more household to be part of the garbage bank uh, system. Thank you, Andre. Uh, are there any questions from the participants? Again, please remember to unmute yourself. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Andre. Uh, I think you covered it really well. And we will make this uh, webinar re recorded. Oh, we can't hear you, Sandra. Sandra is, I think, trying to ask you a question, but mm. no, we can't hear you, Sandra. Can you unmute yourself? I think she has a question, probably. Let's wait a little bit. Uh, maybe you can type your message, Andre. This, this is Kendall here. I just really want to oh. congratulate Andre for fantastic presentation and all, the, no, all the great work that builds up in, to that. Um, maybe you hear Andre, me. Could, could you uh, let us know uh, about next steps? You said, of course, this particular uh, program is uh, closing out uh, by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if you could tell us a bit about some funding opportunities that we're currently exploring. Yes, that's uh, okay, so uh, what Sandra, is Sandra, we step? can hear you. Sorry, Sandra, we can hear you, but can okay. you Okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead, okay. Andre. Okay, so I, I, will ask, uh, I, I will answer first question from Kendall. Go ahead, yes. Okay, uh, so what, what what would be the next step uh, after this? So in the programmatic area, the next step will be we, we, we have engagement with university and private sector. And there are some private sectors now interesting to replicate the garbage bank in the, in, especially in North Jakarta to other uh, villages or to other neighborhoods in North Jakarta. While in, 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 in Bogor, uh, the Association of Garbage Bank will be the uh, the key player uh, for further steps to 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 broaden the spectrum of the garbage bank. But uh, for further step within PMI, we are planning. Uh, I mean, we are we are planning to 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 find more funding uh, to replicate or to enhance this this initiative. Uh, we are now uh, in the process of developing a proposal. To USA uh, for the municipal uh, waste recycling program uh, to reduce uh, marine poly plastic uh, pollution. So uh, we are in the process of the pro proposal development right now. So we believe by having this uh, more uh, garbage banks, more uh, recycling centers will, will will exist in the community and we can expand uh, the, the the current system in wider communities in the in in further when once we get the funding from USAID. And okay, so I got from uh, there's another yeah. question from Ian and that but before maybe we should go back to Sandra. She okay, was, please Sandra. Okay, Sandra, go ahead, please. 
Yes. Apologies. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay. Andre, thank you so much. It was really very fascinating and very insightful. I have a question and a comment. Uh, the question is, um, can you explain a bit more how the kind of micro-insurance uh, scheme would work? Is it m to micro-insure things at household level? Is it personal micro-insurance schemes? I'm really interested because, of course, it has a direct connection also to protect assets uh, that can towards disasters, for instance. And um, other than that, um, there are good examples in attracting from, in, I remember, a Colombia uh, scheme recently in some of the slum areas to give incentives to people where the waste is, the waste recycling is linked directly to mobility and transport schemes. So basically mm -hmm. in big cities, people get free transport um, okay. for in, in change of uh, a tot collection per month. Okay. So it's an interesting scheme because, of course, transport and accessibility and mobility is a big thing in cities when it comes to outskirts and being able to access other areas of town. So maybe that's a, an idea around giving people more incentives and scaling up uh, with, um, with uh, a link to, to that. Um, the comment is more related to the advocacy part. Of course, advocacy and enforcement of law towards, um, in, towards regulating the way people recycle and manage their waste is great. The big question I have, if we want to scale up and change, is also to be more about, try to enforce or push for better production models, no? Production of big companies that are invading markets anyhow with with plastic waste that become unmanageable because it's monodoses. A lot of Asia has to do with these little little doses. So how can we also at community level maybe encourage both the idea to purchase uh, as bulk, bulk purchasing, but also create a different consumption model or incentive or regulate a market when, when it comes to the production of waste and not just the uh, recycling and consuming and, and, um, and managing the waste, but first of all, producing it. What is your thoughts on that and how can you influence part of that game? Okay. Oh, I see okay. there are uh, three questions here. Uh, Andre, maybe yeah. you can start with the micro-insurance one, then we move to the question related to the incentives and then the better production model. Okay. So the micro-insurance is basically only uh, how to attract uh, people to join the garbage bank. So before considering this micro-insurance, uh, we identified a micro-insurance company that has a good uh, uh, system and operation in, in Indonesia. And then we found a particular company that willing to sell their products uh, to, to the community. As an information, the, the, the pro they, they have a lot of pro micro-insurance products basically like House fire in Jakarta, they, uh, they, they have that uh, micro insurance product, dengue product, and uh, micro enterprises uh, product, and, and, and many things. And, and, and the thing is, the premium of the micro insurance product is only uh, $4 per year. So uh, this is uh, quite cheap. Uh, and then we engage the private company to speak to the community and to explain about the possibility of product that the community can purchase. And of course, the community will choose the best product that fit their need. And we registered the, the community uh, into what product they want to choose. The thing is they don't have to pay uh, anything because they pay with the garbage. And then uh, by the profit of the garbage bank and the garbage bank, then we pay the premium to the private company, the micro insurance company. Uh, this is for, of course, uh, bundled to the clients of the garbage bank, which is, which is the personal uh, uh, people who be part of the garbage bank. Uh, though this is an interesting scheme, but uh, not, not not many uh, members of the garbage bank join this uh, bundling mechanism. 
but unless uh, we, we, we offer them with uh, innovation uh, options. And then uh, regarding the incentives, I think it's also a good idea. Uh, in, in, in recent discussion with the garbage bank, uh, they will also will create some, some incentive to the community on how to attract more people right now. Maybe we don't know yet, maybe this is for transport, maybe health. Uh, there was a discussion about to give a health uh, facility to them and so on. So, but yeah, I believe more ideas will come in the future on, on how to attract household level uh, to become of the uh, garbage bank member or client. And regarding the the better product, uh, the thing is we, we haven't done uh, yet about uh, this issue. Uh, we haven't... Uh, we haven't done a focus here to the national level regarding, let's say, uh, to better regulate the the company on the production side. Like 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 Sandra said, uh, how could uh, the private company produce the plastic that can degradable in two years or five years and so on? But basically, there are a lot of discussion at the nationwide. Uh, many companies now. Uh, already consider this degradable uh, product. For instance, uh, through cartons that degradable plastic that are degradable and so on. But even though they, they are not degradable, they are a current law that uh, every company that produce, for instance, plastic bottles, that they have to buy that plastic bottles uh, from the community. So though this is not uh, happen in all company, but the national government now is now doing in the track to force to enforce the the private company to, to obey the the regulation of course uh this is far away from the community because uh it we, we kind of uh, find difficulties to connect the production side from pro production side from the company uh, versus the community actions for recycling reducing and and so on. But I think uh, it'd be a good idea in the future if we can also intervene at the policy level. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Andre. Thank, Thank you. you very much and congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Andre, from, can you go back to Ian's question and then we'll ask the audience if there are more yes. questions. Yes. Uh, advice from the university. So next week will be the first training uh, for from the university to all the garbage bank members. So the advice uh, would be in the main areas, for instance, on marketing and how the garbage bank can do a better marketing to market their recycled products. Second, on product design and product branding. How can they, even if they want to make a flower from a plastic bag, on how can they make a flower from plastic that are marketable? Mm -hmm. So the product design department will assist the community on, on this and, uh, and, and they will also train the community on how to make the product branding because branding nowadays is very important. And, and of course, uh, uh, they will also assist us on how to, to, uh, to, to get more uh, uh, member or clients uh, as part of the garbage bank. So this is the three main areas of the university will give uh, provide uh, technical capacities to the garbage bank, but at the same time they will teach the community on a simple accounting, because this is a community business. It should be a transparency within it, so they need to do a simple accounting, debit credit, and they will use application uh, to do this because currently the community use book, I mean paper based. Uh, can you imagine if flood happened, the paper gone, the book gone, and there's no record about uh, uh, money, kilograms of waste, and everything will be chaotic. And then the university offered us to train about accounting as part of the accountability to the clients and the garbage bank members. That's Thank all you. I think. Yeah. Any other questions? Right, seems like uh, we also reached our end of the time. 
thank you so much, uh, Andre, for this, uh, like Sandra said, fascinating example. And we really would like to see more of this kind of uh, creating ownership at the community level to solve one of the or many of the pressing issues in, in the metropole like Jakarta. I think that would be a great example. And as I mentioned, we will share the recording with a wider audience. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, everybody. All right. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Have a nice day.